include any other equations. Uh, till now, I mean, given a, a set of observations, uh, we know uh, how to uh, fit a simple linear regression model to the uh, data. And uh, once the model uh, has been fitted, uh, then we need to uh, determine the goodness of the fit. So, and uh, also we need to test uh, the statistical uh, significance uh, of the uh, regression coefficients. Well, so one way to do uh, this one, uh, like uh, we in the last lecture, uh, we have uh, uh, tested, tested the hypothesis uh, H naught, which is uh, uh, beta 1 equal to 0 uh, against the uh, alternative hypothesis that, uh, that beta 1 is not equal to 0. And uh, we have used uh, uh, the test statistics uh, T to test uh, this hypothesis. So, another way to uh, approach this problem is uh, the analysis of variance. Uh, so, today we will be basically talking about uh, uh, ANOVA. So, the content of uh, lecture 4 is uh, uh, analysis of variance. Uh, in abbreviation it is uh, ANOVA and also we will be talking about the coefficient of uh, uh, determination. Well, so our model is uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. So, given a set of data say for example, x i, y i for i equal to 1 to n, uh, we know uh, how to fit a simple linear regression model to this data that is y hat equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x. And once the model has been constructed, it is important to uh, confirm the uh, goodness of fit and that is statistical uh, significance uh, of the regression coefficients. So, we have tested the hypothesis h naught which is equal to beta 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis h 1 which says that beta 1 is not equal to 0. And in lecture 3, uh, we have used the test statistic T which is equal to beta 1 hat by M s residual by S x x root over uh, which follows distribution with uh, degree of freedom n minus 2 and this is under H naught. So, we have uh, used uh, this uh, test statistic uh, to test the hypothesis H naught and uh, we reject uh, H naught if this T value is greater than T alpha by 2 n minus 2 at the level of significance here is equal to alpha. 
So, now another approach uh, to, to solve this problem is uh, called uh, uh, ANOVA technique that is uh, analysis of variance. So, here given the set of data x i, y i. So, I am talking about uh, ANOVA now. The variation in response variable, the total variation in data. So, the variation in data, I mean the variation in uh, response variable which is equal to summation y i minus y bar square i equal to 1 to n. So, this uh, y i minus y bar is basically the deviation of the ith observation from the total from the uh, overall mean. Well, now the question is, so this is the uh, total variation in response variable. Now, how much of this variability is, uh, is explained uh, by the regressor variable and uh, how much of this variation is uh, left unexplained? Well, the question is, how much of the variation is explained by the model, model or the regressor variable. Okay. Now, consider the identity y i minus y i hat, which is equal to y i minus y bar minus y i hat minus y bar. Okay, so, this one is basically the deviation of ith observation from its predicted value and this quantity is deviation of the ith observation from overall mean. So, this is the deviation of the ith observation from overall mean. Similarly, this quantity is you know this is the deviation of the ith predicted value from the overall mean. Okay. Now, uh, this identity can be written as y i 
minus y bar which is equal to y i hat minus y bar plus y i minus y i hat. Okay, so, the basically the significance uh, of this identity uh, is that uh, this is the deviation of the ith observation from overall mean and this is the deviation of the ith observation ith fitted observation fitted value of the ith observation from overall mean and this is the residual basically this is E i. So, how much of the variation I mean I am talking about the ith observation. So, how much deviation of the ith observation from overall mean is explained by the model and this is the portion which is remain uh, unexplained. Now, uh, let me just uh, draw a figure. Suppose, uh, given a set of observation x i y i, I have the uh, fitted model, this is my fitted model okay. and my i th observation is here, this is my i th observation. So, basically this is x i and this height is y i. Now, this is y i this is y i hat because this point is basically x i y i hat and suppose the overall mean of the response variable or of the data y is y bar which is this. Well, now you see that uh, this is this distance is y i minus y bar. So, this is the deviation of the ith observation from the overall mean. Okay. Now, part of this deviation is explained by the regression model and uh, this distance basically this distance is basically it is uh, y i hat minus y bar and this portion is y i minus y i hat. Well, so the total deviation is this much and part of this deviation is explained by the regression model and the remaining portion is the unexplained part. Okay. Now, if we if we square both side both sides of this equation and uh, sum from 1 to n, then we get summation y i minus y bar whole square is equal to y i hat minus y bar plus y i minus y i hat. square okay, from i equal to 1 to n i equal to 1 to n. So, this is basically the um, 
uh, variation in the response variable or variation in the data. Now, we want to split this variation into uh, several parts, basically two parts, the part which is, uh, which is explained by the uh, regressor variable and the part of the variation which is uh, uh, not explained by the, uh, by the regressor uh, variable. So, and we want to, uh, the part which is not explained by the regressor variable is, is basically uh, SS residual and we want to minimize the part, uh, we want to minimize SS residual. Okay. So, we want the model to be such that, so that it can uh, explain the, um, the variation in observation. I mean, most of the part is explained by the model, that is what we want. Well, uh, this is equal to summation y i hat minus y bar whole square plus summation y i minus y i hat whole square plus 2 times 1 to n, 1 to n plus 2 times y i hat minus y bar into y i minus y bar, right. And I am going to prove that this uh, cross product term is equal to 0. Well, so the cross product term T is equal to summation y i hat minus y bar Okay. Now, you can check that y i hat minus y bar, uh, this is nothing but beta 1 hat into x i minus x bar. And similarly, y i minus y i hat is basically y i minus beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x i. So, I am just replacing y i hat by the fitted value and now I replace uh, beta naught that is uh, basically y i minus y bar plus beta 1 hat x bar. Okay, so, I can write uh, this is equal to x i minus x bar. Okay, so, if I now replace these two quantity here, i equal to 1 to n, so I will get sum over beta 1 hat x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar so here it is minus minus beta 1 hat x i minus x bar 
Okay, so basically it is beta one hat s x y minus beta one hat square is x x. This is the notation for this summation, which is equal to beta one hat s x y minus beta 1 hat is x x and this quantity is equal to 0, this is equal to 0 because we know that beta 1 hat is equal to s x y by s x x. Okay, so, what we proved is that uh, the cross product term is equal to 0. So, we are left with then summation y i minus y bar whole square is equal to summation y i hat minus y bar whole square plus summation y i minus y i hat. Okay. So, this quantity is uh, denoted by S S T. So, basically it is uh, total sum of square and this quantity is denoted by S S regression that means, sum of square due to regression and this is the portion it is called uh, S s residual. So, what we have is that uh, S s total is equal to S s regression plus S s residual. Well, so this is the splitting of total sum of square into into two parts uh, the total variation in y is split into two parts the variation due to the regression and the variation uh, residual sum of square that be, that means the variation which is not been explained by the regressor variable well, now we have been proved that now what is SS residual? SS re, sorry, SS regression is equal to summation y i hat minus y bar whole square, and this quantity is nothing but just now you prove. I mean we have proved that this is this quantity is equal to beta 1 hat x i minus x bar. So, square here square here summation and this is going to be beta 1 hat square s x x. So, s s residual sorry s s regression is this quantity. Okay. Now, S is residual which is equal to summation y i minus y i hat whole square 1 to n, this is nothing but the ith residual. So, I can write this one as summation E i square 1 to n and we have proved that this quantity is I mean this follows 
chi square distribution with degree of freedom is not uh, n, it is the degree of freedom is n minus 2 because you know all the E i s they are uh, not uh, independent. Um, we know that the residuals they satisfy the uh, constraint that summation uh, E i is equal to 0 and uh, the another constraint is uh, summation uh, E i x i is equal to 0. So, because of this due to these two constraint uh, all the E i s are not uh, independent you know out of uh, uh, n E i s uh, you can choose uh, uh, n minus 2 E i s independently and the remaining two uh, have to be chosen in such a way that uh, they satisfy these two constraints. So, we are losing uh, the two degree of freedom because of because of these two constraint because E i satisfies uh, two constraint. That is why uh, S s residual here uh, it follows chi square n minus 2. Anyway, I have proved this thing before also. Now, uh, S s t sum of square due to uh, total sum of square. So, S s t is equal to sum y i minus y bar whole square i equal to 1 to n and this has this has degree of freedom n minus 1 uh, because of the fact that uh, you know you have y 1 minus y bar y 2 minus y bar and y n minus y bar and they satisfy the condition that of course, it is always true that some y i minus y bar is equal to 0 i equal to 1 to n. So, for this reason you know out of n quantities uh, n minus 1 can be uh, chosen uh, independently and the nth one has to be chosen in such a way that this constraint is satisfied. So, that is why uh, total sum of square has n minus 1 degree of freedom. And uh, also uh, you know uh, we came to know that S s t is equal to S s regression plus S s residual the variation which has been explained by the model and this is the variation which has uh, which is not explained by the regression variable. So, this has degree of freedom and also uh, degree of freedom has the additive property. So, uh, degree of freedom total uh, is equal to degree of freedom of regression plus degree of freedom of residual. So, uh, this quantity is n minus 1 and uh, we know that uh, SS residual has degree of freedom n minus 2 and then the degree of freedom of S s uh, regression is equal to uh, 1. Okay. Now, we will make uh, the ANOVA table Well, source of variation, degree of freedom, sum of square. Well, uh, let me write here 
total sum of square. And uh, the source of variations are regression and the residual. So, this has degree of freedom 1, the residual has degree of freedom n minus 2 and this has degree of freedom n minus 1. This one is denoted by, we know what is this quantity, this is denoted by SS regression, this is called SS residual and this is called SST. Now, m s mean square which is obtained by uh, dividing the s s by degree of freedom. So, here it is uh, m s regression is equal to s s regression by 1 and similarly, m s residual is equal to s s residual by degree of freedom that is n minus 2. Yes. Now, we already know that uh, expected value of m s regression is equal to sigma square. This uh, we have proved before and it can be proved that expected value of sorry uh, this is m s residual m s residual. Uh, it can be proved that m s regression is equal to sigma square plus beta 1 hat square s x x. Right? And also we know that n minus 2 m s residual by sigma square this follows chi square with degree of freedom n minus 2 and it can be proved that m s regression by sigma square this follows chi square with degree of freedom 1 that is under h naught that is beta 1 equal to 0 and these two quantities are these two uh, these are basically uh, this is a function of uh, random variables y y so and they are independent now a statistical theorem we have theorem says that let x follows chi square m and y follows chi square n and they are independent then x by m by y by n this follows f with degree of freedom m and n. So, this quantity is denoted by f. So, this is basically the ratio of two chi squares uh, 
uh, they follow um, f distribution. So, from there from this theorem uh, we can say that uh, we can define now for one f for our ANOVA table that f is equal to uh, m s regression by m s residual this follows f with degree of freedom 1 n minus 2. And obviously, uh, looking at these two expected values, so uh, what we are going to do is that in the ANOVA table next we are going to compute uh, f, this f is equal to m s regression by m s residual and looking at their expected value. Uh, it is intuitively clear that uh, if f is large, if f is large, then it is likely that this beta 1 is not equal to 0. If beta 1 is equal to 0, then this ratio is going to be close to close to 1. So, from there uh, we can say that to test the hypothesis H naught beta, beta 1 equal to 0, we compute F and reject H naught if if f is greater than f alpha with degree of freedom 1 n minus 2. So, this is uh, another way to another approach to test uh, the hypothesis beta 1 equal to 0. I mean the, test, uh, the same test we can uh, do using uh, the t distribution also. Basically, those two are uh, same, I am going to prove uh, that one. Uh, first, uh, let me give uh, uh, one example. Uh, for this ANOVA table. Well, uh, I am going to consider the same example uh, cost on advertisement that is x i and this is the sales amount y i and we have the data 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2 and 5, 4. Okay. And we know that the fitted model is y i hat is equal to minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7 x i. And from here we can you know before also we have computed e i's and we know that uh, SS residual for this problem is for this data is equal to 1.1. And uh, what we need to compute is that we need to compute uh, what is the total variation in the data that is SST which is equal to summation 
uh, y i minus y bar whole square. Okay, you can check that uh, your uh, y bar is equal to five here, and uh, it is not difficult to check that this is equal to eight six. Okay, and also uh, we know that S S regression which is equal to beta 1 hat square is x x. Uh, we know that beta 1 is 0 0.7. So, this is equal to 0 0.7 whole square and one can check that s x x is basically equal to 10. Okay. So, this quantity is equal to 4.9 and here, here is my ANOVA table for this problem. ANOVA, the source of, of variation, this is a regression residual total degree of freedom, degree of freedom for this one is equal to 1. Well, the total uh, degree of freedom here is n minus 1 and n is equal to 5. So, total degree of freedom is 4 and the degree of freedom residual is n minus 2 that is equal to 3 and hence the degree of freedom for regression is equal to 1 and the SS values are 4.9, 1.1 and the total variation is equal to 6. So, here you can see that uh, for this problem the fitted model is really good because the total variation in y is 6 and most of the part of this variation has been explained by the regression. So, out of 6 4.9 uh, has been this is the part of the variation which has been explained by the regression model. Uh, so, most of the part uh, has been explained by the regression model and the portion which is not explained by the regression model is 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, well, so the f value here is equal to 4.9 sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, first we have to we need to compute m s value the m s value uh, is C, uh, s s by degree of freedom. So, this is going to be 4.9 and m s residual is 1.1 by, by 3 which is going to be 0.367 and the f value f value is uh, basically m s regression by m s residual. So, 4.9 by 0 0.367 which is going to be 13.6. Okay. And now, you, uh, you know this f uh, follows this f here that follows uh, f distribution with degree of freedom 1, 3 and uh, you find the value of f uh, 0 0.0513 which is uh, going to be equal to 10 point. So, you can check this value from the statistical table. Uh, now, you check you can you can see that our computed f value which is 13.6 uh, is uh, is 
larger than the uh, tabulated val value. So, we can con conclude that which is I mean this computed value is is larger than uh, f 0 0.051 with degree of freedom 1 and 3. So, we can conclude that uh, we can reject h naught is rejected okay? at uh, the level of significance of this test is equal to alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So, basically we, we have uh, um, got the same result using, using the t test. Now, I am going to prove that these two tests are basically you know these two whether you are using f test or uh, t test uh, it does not matter uh, in the case of simple uh, linear regression basically these two tests are uh, the same. Well, let me prove that uh, that uh, uh, f is is nothing but uh, t square I mean uh, t square uh, value well. Well, so uh, to test this hypothesis uh, beta 1 is equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis beta 1 not equal to 0. Uh, either you can go for the t test uh, which says that uh, t is equal to beta 1 hat square sorry beta 1 hat by m s residual by s x x. This is the t statistic to uh, test this hypothesis. Now, you compute t square which is going to be beta 1 hat square into s x x by m s residual right and uh, and this quantity is uh, okay well so this so this quantity is nothing but uh, m s regression and the denominator is m s residual which is nothing but the f test. So, uh, the value of the f distribution with a degree of freedom uh, 1 n minus 2 is same as the value of the t distribution with degree n minus 2. Now, uh, just for uh, we can we can check this one in our previous example. Uh, what we got is that uh, for testing this hypothesis, uh, we got uh, f equal to uh, 13.61. Now, if you go for the uh, t statistic to test this hypothesis, uh, we will have this is uh, beta 1 is equal to beta 1 hat is equal to 0 0.07 and m s residual is 0.367 by s x x is equal to 10 and this is going to be equal to 3.655 and you can check that uh, you can check that uh, this uh, 3 I mean the t square which is basically equal to 3.655 is is equal to uh, equal to 13.61 uh, which is equal to f so whether you uh, use the t statistic to test this hypothesis or the f anova approach uh, that is the f uh, statistic to uh, test this hypothesis they are basically the same um, and basically the same for for simple linear regression model but uh, once we will be talking about the multiple linear regression then uh, we we need to uh, follow the anova approach only
Okay, so let the next uh, I'll uh, I'll be talking about the coefficient of uh, uh, determination. Well, so uh, what is this? Is that this is uh, uh, denoted by uh, is is this is defined by defined as r square, which is basically the ratio of S S regression by S S total. Uh, well, uh, you know there are several uh, approach uh, to evaluate the uh, performance of uh, fitted model. So, this is one parameter which can be uh, which is used to evaluate the performance of the uh, fitted model. Uh, here uh, this quantity is nothing but uh, 1 minus S S residual by S S T and uh, you know that uh, S S T is equal to S S regression plus S S residual. So, that is why and uh, obviously, uh, the range for R square is going to be uh, from 0 to 1, it can be at most 1 if the S S residual is equal to 0. So, uh, this R square, uh, it is basically determines that the, uh, the proportion of variability that has been explained by the, uh, by the regression model, because R square is equal to S S regression by S S total. So, this ratio will give you the proportion of uh, variability that has been uh, you know explained by the regression model. Uh, well, uh, let me just uh, give uh, this is a very important parameter when R square is going to be equal to 1. So, R square is going to be equal to 1 if S S if S S residual is equal to 0. So, S S residual is equal to 0 and this will happen if the fitted model explain this will happen if the fitted model model explain all the variability in y right that means there is no part which remain unexplained by the model and the example of this one is this is the case basically. Suppose you have the data like this, then your fitted model is going to be this. So, uh, here R square is going to be equal to 1 and in this case it is uh, intuitively clear that S S residual is going to be equal to 0. Well, uh, if suppose in some example R square is equal to 0 0.8 uh, for it may be this is the case these are the three data point and you have fitted this model and uh, intuitively you, can, you know th this is the R square is going to be very high um, and uh, what we say here is that what is the meaning of R square is equal to 0.8 is that uh, approximately uh, 80 percent of the total variability in Y uh, that has been explained by the uh, regression model and the remaining 20 percent of the variability in Y uh, remains uh, unexplained by the model. So, the higher the value of the uh, regress R square value, the better the model is. Okay, so, 
uh, that's all for today and uh, next class we'll be talking about uh, uh, talking more about r square thank you very much